Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Kenneth Eugene Smith? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the timeline of the crime, then offer my analysis. On March 18, 1988, a pastor named Charles Sennett Sr. discovered the body of his wife, Elizabeth Dorleen Sennett, in their home in Colbert County, Alabama. When first responders arrived, they found that Elizabeth had been stabbed eight times in the chest and once in each side of her neck. She had a pulse and was taken to a hospital, but died two hours later. Investigators received an anonymous tip, which pointed them to Charles and three conspirators. One of these conspirators was a man named Kenneth Eugene Smith. He had been born on July 4, 1965, so he was 22 years old at this time. The police interviewed Charles Sennett on March 25, seven days after the murder. He denied involvement in his wife's murder, but as he was leaving, an officer asked him if he knew a man named Kenneth Smith. Charles turned red upon hearing this. He made his way to his church and met with his two sons, Charles admitted to them that he arranged to have his wife killed, and he was having an affair with a member of the church congregation. After offering this confession, he walked out of the church, climbed into his pickup truck, and used a firearm to end his own life. With Charles now out of the picture, the police focused their attention on the conspirators. They searched Kenneth's home and found a VCR that had been taken from the Senate family house. Kenneth and a conspirator named John Forrest Parker confessed to the murder. Here's what they told the police. Charles Sennett was having severe financial problems and cheating on his wife. Eventually, he came to believe that killing his wife would solve his problems. He took out a large life insurance policy on Elizabeth. Charles approached a tenant of his named Billy Gray Williams and asked him if he would carry out the murder of Elizabeth. Charles offered him $3,000 which he had borrowed from his mistress. Billy agreed to carry out the homicide. In mid-April 1988, he recruited Kenneth and John for assistance and arranged a meeting. In this meeting, Charles explained to the men that he wanted Elizabeth killed. She was often in the family house, which was in the country. The house did not get many visitors. Killing her should not be difficult, and they should be able to carry out the murder undetected. A few days later, the men indicated that they were fine with the idea of committing the murder. The $3,000 was split three ways, $1,000 for Billy, Kenneth, and John. Charles also gave the men $200 to buy a gun, but they spent the money on drugs instead. Kenneth and John decided they would carry out the murder using other weapons, including a six-inch survival knife. Charles told the men that he would be away from his house on March 18th, from 8.30 a.m. until noon. Kenneth and John made their way to the Senate family house on that day, arriving at about 9.30 a.m. Kenneth knocked on the door, and Elizabeth answered. He told her that her husband, Charles, gave him and John permission to look around the property to see about hunting on it. Elizabeth called Charles to confirm this arrangement, and then told the men that it was okay to look around. The men then asked Elizabeth if they could use the bathroom. After entering the house, the men attacked Elizabeth by punching her, beating her with various items, and stabbing her. After mortally wounding her, they ransacked the house to make it look like a burglary. John Forrest Parker and Billy Gray Williams were both convicted in connection with Elizabeth's murder. John was sentenced to death. He was executed by lethal injection on June 10, 2010. Billy was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole and died in November 2020. Kenneth Eugene Smith was convicted of capital murder. The jury recommended life in prison without the possibility of parole by a vote of 11 to 1. But the trial court overrode this recommendation and sentenced Kenneth to death. On November 17, 2022, the state of Alabama attempted to execute Kenneth. While trying to start an IV, they tortured him for an hour and a half by repeatedly stabbing him with needles. They stopped attempting to kill him at about 11.20 p.m. The execution was rescheduled, but this time the state was not going to use lethal injection. Rather, they selected a controversial method called nitrogen hypoxia, 
This execution method had never been used in the history of the United States. The lethal procedure involves a face mask, specifically a full face piece type C supplied air respirator. This face mask is placed on the condemned inmate and 100% nitrogen gas is pumped into the mask. Air is 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and 1% other gases like argon and carbon dioxide. The absence of oxygen is what leads to the death of the inmate. In theory, the inmate is unconscious within seconds without the sense of suffocating. Asphyxiation occurs a few minutes later. On January 25, 2024, Kenneth Smith had his last meal, which comprised T-bone steak, cheese-covered hash browns, and scrambled eggs. Seven hours later, Kenneth was prepared for execution by being strapped to a gurney. His last words were, quote, Tonight, Alabama causes humanity to take a step backwards. Thank you for supporting me. Love all of you, unquote. The execution procedure started at 7.53 p.m. The nitrogen gas was turned on at 7.57 p.m. Kenneth had a convulsion, thrashed violently on the gurney, and was gasping for air. He stopped moving at 8.08 p.m. and was pronounced dead at 8.25 p.m. Now moving to my analysis. Here are my thoughts on a few areas that stood out to me in this case. Item number one. Many people are upset that the state of Alabama went forward with the nitrogen hypoxia execution. The authorities in Alabama tried to make it seem like everything went according to plan. A prison official claimed that the convulsion was normal and expected. He said that Kenneth's body reacted negatively to the gas because Kenneth held his breath for about four minutes. If he had breathed normally, it would not have happened. The official may not have considered that Kenneth didn't breathe normally because of the execution part. The state has this guaranteed painless killing method, at least according to them, but it can be upended by the inmate holding his breath. It seems like there's a flaw in their plan. The state attorney general claimed that the execution proved nitrogen hypoxia was an effective and humane method of execution. Despite what officials in Alabama say, the execution did not go as planned. Rather, it only amplified the concerns of those who opposed this execution method. The descriptions of the execution offered by witnesses paint a much different picture than what officials would have people believe. One witness described it as the most violent execution they had ever witnessed. Another called it a horror show. A religious advisor suggested that Kenneth was struggling for his life. Officials claim this execution method is painless because the inmate will be unconscious before they have time to sense being suffocated. This description is inconsistent with the experience that Kenneth had. He appeared to suffer tremendously. Item number two, as I mentioned, nitrogen hypoxia has never been used to execute an inmate in the United States. There is no experimental research available on how this execution method affects inmates because it would be unethical to run a study of that nature. Information about nitrogen hypoxia comes from data collected during industrial accident investigations. This method has been used to kill animals in the past, but due to symptoms like panic and distress, it is no longer used. So it's too distressing for animals, but Alabama is fine with the idea of using it to kill human beings. Item number three, those who have concerns about the nitrogen hypoxia execution method are not opposed to it simply because they don't want any executions to occur. They are concerned about specific risks associated with this method. For example, if the face mask allows any oxygen inside, the condemned inmate will sense their own suffocation. A failure to kill the inmate may leave them in a persistent vegetative state. The inmate could vomit, which could lead to asphyxiation. And if nitrogen were to leak, it could kill or injure prison workers. Experts working for the United Nations described nitrogen hypoxia as an untested method of execution, which, in addition to being torture, is cruel, inhuman, and degrading. Item number four, despite a lack of applicable research on nitrogen hypoxia, the state of Alabama was determined to push forward with the execution. They were not going to worry about constructs like science, logic, ethics, or compassion. The state just wanted to kill Kenneth Eugene Smith and open the door to execute other people who are awaiting the death penalty. Officials have deceived themselves into believing that research just isn't necessary or warranted when it comes to execution methods. 
they have demonstrated recklessness and overconfidence. In a curious twist, the state of Alabama in particular seems very interested in offering condemned inmates a choice of execution method, for example, nitrogen hypoxia, electrocution, or lethal injection. I imagine some type of poster hanging up in a hallway in death row that reads, In this prison, we take pride in offering you many different execution methods to choose from. With so many selections available, it's hard to decide, but we really must insist that you do. Sign up for your favorite execution method today. Even without access to adequate research, Alabama officials assembled an experimental protocol for deploying the nitrogen hypoxia execution method. In the protocol, which ironically is long-winded, there was a real emphasis on safety. It's extremely important that no one dies in the death chamber. Well, with one exception. Now moving to my final thoughts. In terms of my personal beliefs, I don't like the idea of the death penalty. But from a scientific perspective, the firing squad certainly offers a faster and less painful death than nitrogen hypoxia. The research literature is fairly clear on this point. Those who oppose the firing squad method focus more on how it has been used in the past, such as in war crimes, than anything to do with the suffering of condemned prisoners. In addition, the firing squad doesn't disguise the brutality of execution. Officials in Alabama are trying to clean up the image of executions by making them appear to be painless and peaceful, but that's not how executions work. Their failure to painlessly execute Kenneth Smith is a prime example of this. The state has botched a few executions. These disasters offer a lesson on accepting responsibility. If they want to execute prisoners, they need to own the viciousness of the act and not shy away from reality. Those are my thoughts in the case of Kenneth Eugene Smith. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.